oh, I'm so mousy and not special and I've like, I've got like brown hair and such pale skin and nobody sees me. But then all of a sudden, the hottest, darkest man in the country is like, you're cool, you have special powers, you are actually beautiful. <gasps> Hi everybody and welcome back on my booktube channel Books with Leo and today I am here with the nope trope book tag. I was tagged by Keras from Keras Library. I thought the tag seemed like a lot of fun so here I am doing it. Um, this tag was created by Zoe who I also follow on Twitter who's an absolute sweetheart um, and she's also really funny. I love her videos. She always makes me laugh um, and she's really gorgeous too. Um, and her channel is called Zoe's All Booked and she started this nope trope book tag. So basically what this tag is, is that she has written down a couple of tropes that are really apparent in a lot of books and you basically recommend books off of those tropes or you tell people what books you didn't like off of those tropes. So we're going to be talking about a couple of books that I really did not enjoy today and a couple of books that I really did enjoy today. Tropes are basically cliches or sometimes even harmful stereotyping. So there's all sorts of things that just keep on happening in books and that are becoming sort of cliches because they're happening so much. So for example like the whole paranormal romance thing where a man would be ancient and then he would fall into in love with this young girl and he was like a creature and she was like a human was a big trope like a couple of years ago but that's one example but this whole tag is basically all sorts of different tropes and then based off of those tropes you will show a book and talk about that book so that's really cool Zoe is super inventive and yeah overall I just thought this was a really fun tag so yeah let's get into it. The first trope is eavesdropping which leads to miscommunication in a book. Um, this is always so annoying to me because it's such an obvious plot device like come on kind of lazy and there's like a lot of YA books where this happens but you know that's life. <laughs> to be honest I don't know if this would ever happen in real life like I hate it when I'm just like if these characters could communicate just a little bit better there would be no book at all. Not sure, that can be bad writing, but that can also just be, I don't know, a discussion about co communication, possibly. But, you know, this trope can really ick me sometimes, um, but possibly it could be done well too. I haven't stumbled upon any examples yet, but that might just be me, so I don't know. And Zoe then said, name a book you heard great things about and expected to love, but ended up hating. Tasmin, I apologise. From the bottom of my heart, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know what to say, you guys. I really expected to love Circe by Madeline Miller so much because it is Greek mythology. Um, this cover is gorgeous. Circe is a feminist witch living on a remote island, literally turning men into pigs. It had like everything you would expect me to love, but I didn't, so that's kind of sad. Um, to be honest, I loved the first half of this book. I was really captivated, I was engrossed, I was in the story, I was just like, oh my god, this is amazing. All these things that Cersei's gone through with her father and the things that like the Greek court and just really nice, loved it. But then the story just kept dragging and dragging and dragging and like it took so long. Like I think halfway through I was just like, oh my god, is this ever gonna end? I think not. I kind of Ah, it was just kind of... Mm. I, I didn't like that it, it took so long in the end. It felt unnecessary for the story to be this long. But that could also be due to my aversion for short stories because I just... I don't thrive on uh, short stories unless I, like, don't read them all in one go. So, I don't know. It reminded me of a lot of different stories about Cersei's life, like, sort of made into one big story. And maybe that's also why I sort of ended up not really enjoying it. Um... I don't know, hate is a very strong word, but I was kind of angry because I really wanted to love this book because it is so pretty and because it is so cool. I think if you like stories that drag on for hours on end, you might love this because I, I like slow stories too, but this just, um, I just kept on going and going and going, just like I'm doing right now. It just kept on rambling and yeah, hence I didn't enjoy it, so I'm really sad. <laughs> Okay, so the next trope is love triangles. Name a series where you can't pick your favourite book. Okay, so for this, 
Oh, can I lift this up with one hand? I think I can. For this, I have grabbed the Truly Devious series off of my shelf because this is really one of my favourite YA series that I've ever, ever, ever read. It is so much fun. Um, I have not read the last book, which is The Hand on the Wall. So to be honest, I, I can't say whether this will be a favourite, but I think it will. Like, I'm sort of pretty sure it will be. This series is really one of my favourites ever, ever, ever. Um, it is about Stevie Bell, who is dealing with anxiety, and she has a special talent. She is very interested in true crime. There's even a My Favourite Murder mention in one of these books, which is really crazy because I love My Favourite Murder. It's one of my favourite podcasts. It's basically these two ladies are talking about murder and they're really funny and they talk about mental health a lot too, which is why this podcast perfectly fits this book because this is a YA true crime -ish novel with a protagonist who's dealing with anxiety and I think the anxiety rap in this is really good um, coming from somebody who has anxiety and who has experienced anxiety issues. But definitely a trigger warning if you're not in the best place, maybe this is not for you right now. It's not that it's been delved into in such detail but there's like panic attacks and stuff like that happening. Um, I, I felt really seen reading this book in some way because she's dealing with these issues and but she goes to this school, Ellingham Academy, where um, it's basically a boarding school for people with weird special talents so there's a guy in her class who's writing a novel but who's really young there's this guy who's like sort of youtube famous uh, who makes like short movies and they're like all together in this school and her talent is basically true crime uh, she wants to be a detective one day but the thing is there was uh, a kidnapping and a murder that happened at ellingham academy a long 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 time ago in the 1900 some things and Stevie Bell is certain that she will figure out what happened and she will solve the murder and that's when the murders start happening again at their school and that is of course really scary. Oh, I love this series so much. I couldn't pick a favourite. I, I love both Truly Devious and The Vanishing Stair equally I think which is really rare because a lot of times books like this sort of suffer from second book syndrome but this one definitely didn't. I think I might even enjoy this one more than the first one. The only issue that I have is that I had to wait like until the next book came out and then I kept forgetting what the first one was about. So now I've forgotten like a lot of things about both of these books and that's why I can't just dive into the sequel which is annoying. Sometimes it's like that. <laughs> that's definitely my answer for this question. The next trope is not like the other girls didn't know I'm beautiful which is a trope that is happening in YA so much it is so annoying. One of the books where I remember it best being a thing is the Shadow and Bone series by Leva Dugo. I don't like the Shadow and Bone series like as you all know I, I love Six of Crows. I can't shut up about Six of Crows and I'm really excited for the Netflix series as well. I hope it will be fun because, you know, like I said, I didn't like Shadow and Bone and one of my biggest irks is that there were so many tropes in Shadow and Bone and like when I read it I was quite young but even then I was a bit annoyed at certain things happening which is just like remarkable if you ask me. I remember Alina which is the main character, she was really like, oh I'm so mousy and not special and I've, like, I've got like brown hair and such pale skin and nobody sees me but then all of a sudden but then all of a sudden, the hottest, darkest man in the country is like, you're cool, you have special powers, you are actually beautiful. <gasps> I'm so annoyed. I didn't like that. But <laughs> the question for this one is, name a book that has a pretty cover but was boring as hell. <laughs> so a lot of these questions are actually similar to the mid-year book freak out, which I just did recently. Um, but I didn't want to pick the same book for this. So I went with another book, a book that I've actually unhauled but is still on the pile in my room and that is Winter Magic and that is a collection of stories curated by Abby Elphinstone and there's stories of loads of different people in it I won't read them all but if you're interested you can look it up that I bought this when I was still um, doing studies in Amsterdam and I love Amsterdam bookstores they are so lovely basically they're like especially American Book Center and Waterstones and we also have Scheltema which is Scheltema is so big it's like six stories full of books and they have like a really big secondhand section as well and they're really cheap so love Amsterdam bookstores I made it a mission to like visit each and every one whilst I was in Amsterdam studying so Winter Magic I bought during that time and I bought it in the summer and it was only five euros then and I was just like oh I'm so smart and then I'll read it in the winter love that for me but then I got around to reading it that year and it was just eh. I didn't care I didn't care I'm, I'm, I'm also so bad at short story collections 
I tend to not really enjoy them unless I don't put pressure on myself to like actually read through the whole book and just read a story at a time. For this one it wasn't happening and I wasn't enjoying it and I don't know there were some stories in there that were fun but none that blew my mind actually and so I was like I shouldn't hold this and that's what I did but the cover is still really pretty and cute and I love illustrations that are this style. Okay, and the fourth trope is the all-consuming love trope where a character is so infatuated with somebody else that they can't see past that. And it says here, name a book that gave you a book hangover. Oh my god, I had so many options for this question. I was just like, what do I do? I am going with The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern because I realised I've never talked about this book on here, I think, which is weird because it's one of my favourite books ever. Um, I have the Dutch copy and I love the Dutch copy, it is so pretty. Um, and in Dutch it's called Het Nachtcircus, um, which is also really nice. Um, I think the translation of this book is really well done as well. I loved it in Dutch. I think Dutch is also, I know a lot of people think Dutch is an ugly language, but I think it can be really beautiful and like poetic. Okay, I'm drifting off. Anyway, I actually really enjoyed reading this in Dutch and I thought the translation was done very well, which is rare because a lot of times like translations can really ruin a book so that was nice that it was actually done very well I read this quite a while ago and I still want to get an English copy one day because <laughs> uh, I only have the Dutch one and I would love to read like the original work this gave me a major book hangover I remember reading it and then just sort of not being able to think about anything else for like months after it because it was just so it consumed me basically this book is about it's it's set in a circus which is already really great because I am as some of you guys may know if you're new here you don't but I am also in the circus community myself I do aerial sling and I do aerial silks as well I'm not very good at silks but you know I'm delving into it my main apparatus I would say is aerial sling and it's like one of my favorite hobbies one of my favorite things to do I also do pull but that's not really a circus thing um anyway I'm drifting off um yeah I, I just I, I love circus and I love the vibes you know and this book is really mystical at the same time so magical whimsical and it has it has the Roald Dahl vibes it has like the weird vibes that just it's so, it's so vague but in the best way possible this whole book read like a fever dream but like the best fever dream you've ever had <laughs> Oh, I can't with myself. Anyway, it is, it's su such a hard book to explain, but it's basically about a, a wizard, like a magician, who's made a deal with another magician, and they both have sort of these children, a boy and a girl, and they are sort of in a magical competi competition against each other, like sort of pushed on by their respective fathers or guardians and basically or that's what I remember maybe this is false I don't know and basically these children of course they fall in love over the course of the years you read like it's, it's a long storyline so you read like a big course of their lives and how the circus like magically appears at night and vanishes again and yeah it's just really beautiful and I uh, love this book check it out you should read it if you haven't heard of it yet like a lot of people have heard of it but you know I'm just throwing it out there okay this is the last question already the douchebag boyfriend oh my god there were so many books back in the day with the worst boyfriends in there <clears throat> mortal instruments name a book that took you a while to get into but you ended up loving I could have picked a lot of different fantasy books for this because it happens to me a lot that when I read fantasy I just sort of in the beginning of the book, I'm just like, oh my god, what's happening? I don't guess it. I'm so dumb. I don't know. But then when I get into it, I'm like, oh my god, this is a work of genius. The best thing I've ever read. I don't want to ever read any other genres. Why wasn't this made into a TV show? You know, that's just me. So I could have gone with The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon uh, because that was really a book that had this situation for me where I just sort of was very confused at the beginning and then I ended up loving it and I had the same experience with the sequel and I'm having the exact same experience with Friary of the Orange Tree right now. I'm not doing that. I'm going with the Life Ship Traders trilogy by Robin Hobb because I rarely talk about Robin Hobb on this channel even though Robin Hobb is one of my favourite authors and that's just stupid so I was like I, I need to talk about this lady because I love her. She writes beautiful stories and her books are always really big and you know you could be intimidated but please don't be because they're so beautiful. This series is basically so high fantasy that in the beginning you're just sort of confused at everything that's going on but then you end up loving it and I could have gone with almost any Robin Hobb series really um, but this 
is just the one I have here. This is the second book in Dutch. It's called Het Dolende Schip. Um, I, I don't know what the first book is called. I don't know what the translation is called, but I do know that the trilogy is called Life Ship Traders or something like that. This is in the same world as the Rainland series, which is another series by Robin Hobb. And that series is about dragons. And basically in this world, dragons come out of eggs. So at first they're like sort of sea worms and, and then they turn into eggs. And then from the eggs come dragons. But if you cut through these eggs um, and you use the wood, you can make ships from the eggs and then the dragons the dragons will never be born. So it is seen as a sort of cruelty within this world. But if you do make like live ships from that wood, from the egg, then basically those ships will be alive because they will have the spirit of the dragon within the ship. And so these live ships belong to families centuries on centuries on end and are passed through families and they basically form amazing connections, but still it's, it's sort of controversial because it's seen as like killing a living thing in order to get a living ship. And basically we follow one family and their history and their family members. So like a lot of different members from the family we follow. This is just the perfect pick for this question because this is really a book where I remember just being very confused in the beginning and then loving it in the end, um, like I have with all the books. And the world is really interesting. The world building is amazing. The way Robin Hobb weaves stories and events characters, every character is so lively, like everything is so well thought out. So yeah, this is just really one of my favourite book series. And yeah, a very good answer to this question. And the last question on this list is tell us your favourite or least favourite trope and for me I'm definitely going to talk about my favourite trope which is the biggest cliche of all the cliches but it's just a trope I love very dearly um, and that is I love enemies to lovers romances. I don't know why but there's just something about like people who essentially hate each other or who are really opposed essentially fall in love in the end and I just think that is so wonderful and yeah something I really enjoy in books and for example I was reading um Wishes of Ash and Rune by E. Latimer and I didn't finish that book because I wasn't in the right mood because you know it's, it's a really witchy spooky book it's about gay witches basically and oh that's a bit of an exaggeration it's, it's about witches and different covens uh, and there are tensions on the rise there's a serial killer there's all sorts of things happening in that book um really fun and I really want to read it during Halloween and during October and stuff so that's why I put it off for now but basically in that book there's this girl from this one coven and another coven um comes visiting and um the granddaughter of that coven's leader um is sort of the enemy of the other a girl in the book and basically they fall in love which is just oh my god I love that whole concept and that whole thing and the one thing that I did like about the whole Shadow and Bone trilogy is basically that Elena falls in love with the Darkling first and I just ugh, that whole Darkling romance that was just so like was such a bad boy I know it's really stupid but I loved that but Enemies to Lovers is really something I enjoy in books you know there's obviously loads of examples for when it's done really badly but you know these were just a few that I personally enjoyed. I think this was the whole no trope book tag. I'm not really tagging anybody because I always feel weird doing that, but basically feel tagged. I would love if you do it. So, you know, just I'm, I'm making everybody feel tagged right now. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe, click the like button, leave a comment, you know what to do. And also small announcement time. Uh, my Etsy update is live if I'm correct. Um, so I would really like if you guys checked out my web shop with bookmarks and stuff and yeah. I want to thank you for all the support I've already got because you guys are really amazing. So thank you so much. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.